can diet really help with MS symptoms, chronic illness, and long-term health outcomes? Yes, yes it can. Get ready, because today I'm gonna drop some knowledge. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. On this channel, I share my thoughts on living well with MS and chronic illness. This does not mean that my thoughts are medical advice, and it also does not mean that my thoughts are necessarily going to agree with your thoughts. It just means that I'm thoughtful. Recently, I've received a bit of pushback about recommending a whole food plant-based diet and what I share in these videos. So I wanted to make this video to clarify why I eat this way and why I recommend it. And that's all it is, a recommendation. You don't have to change your diet at all if you don't want to. You're a grown-up. You can eat whatever you want. One of the ways that I'm living well with my MS is by striving to do good by my body with diet. I do my research and I share it with you. Okay, going back to being thoughtful. I'm not only thoughtful, but I'm careful. I'm full of thought and full of care. I don't share these recommendations just because I like broccoli. I have 17 years experience living with MS and adjusting my diet to support my health. I have a certificate in plant-based nutrition from E. Cornell. I attended a class at the Cleveland Clinic about preventing and reversing disease with diet led by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn. And I do a lot of research before publishing my videos. I liberally splash pictures of the studies, quote directly from them, and put links in the description so you can check them out for yourself. I believe in science and I believe in data. So today I'm gonna to share tidbits from many of these studies on how eating a more whole food plant-based diet can help us to manage our symptoms and have better long-term health outcomes. And who doesn't want that? Okay, I have a lot that I wanna show you today, so let's go. Let's start with some of the more recent findings. In this study, released in April 2023, they concluded, we note a significant association between Mediterranean diet score and cognition in a representative sample of people with MS. The strength of the relationship in progressive disease suggests the possibility of a neuroprotective mechanism. Hmm. One of the biggest fears of people first diagnosed with MS is worrying about being able to support themselves and their families, being able to continue their careers. Cognitive difficulties are one of the leading reasons people with MS leave the workforce. So we want to do whatever we can to protect our beautiful neurons. Eating a more Mediterranean diet can help. The Mediterranean diet relies heavily on plant foods. It emphasizes plant-based foods and healthy fats. And it's not just healthy fats though. In this study also released in April of 2023, they concluded, this 16 week long low fat dietary intervention reduced the fatigue score significantly in the active group compared to the controls. They used a modified fatigue impact scale and a fatigue severity scale and found significant decreases in fatigue for both with just over a 10% decrease in fats in their diet. And in this study on a low fat plant-based diet, they found that participants showed significant improvements in measures of fatigue, BMI, and metabolic biomarkers. Fatigue is another one of the leading causes of people with MS leaving the workforce. So eating a diet that is low fat and plant-based can help with two of the biggest reasons people with MS leave the workforce. I am not anti-fats though. There are many compounds in plants that can help us with our symptoms. Omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids found in plants play a significant role in our health. The optimum ratio of omega-6 to omega-3s is one, but it's common for our modern Western diets to be over 15 to one. Having this high ratio is linked to many diseases, including cardiovascular disease, cancer, and inflammatory and autoimmune diseases and a lower ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acids is more desirable in reducing the risk for many of the chronic diseases. A whole food plant-based diet can help with this ratio because it removes many of the oils that contain too many omega-6 fatty acids. 
Some ways to increase our omega-3s are to add ground flaxseed, hemp hearts, chia seeds, walnuts, edamame, kale, and Brussels sprouts. And speaking of Brussels sprouts, they are an excellent source of sulforaphane, which has incredible neuroprotective properties. Sulforaphane can be found in foods like Brussels sprouts, mustard greens, kale, cabbage, and broccoli. Yes, I really do like broccoli. Do you like broccoli? Or do you have another favorite vegetable? Let me know in the comments below. In this review from 2019, where they focused on the protective effects of sulforaphane on the nervous system, they found besides its promotion of antioxidant defenses, sulforaphane also significantly lessens the inflammatory responses to pathogenic states, thus reducing the amount of damage done due to the body's immune response. And sulforaphane also protects mitochondrial function in neurons. And sulforaphane has many potential benefits in preventing and modifying the course of symptom burden of multiple neurodegenerative diseases. And it concluded that sulforaphane is a powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory phytochemical with great promise in its ability to protect the nervous system from many diseases and toxins and reduce the symptomatic burden of multiple pervasive diseases. See, veggies are good for us. Fiber is another component of plants that's essential for our health as well. Fiber is essential for a healthy gut microbiome, and there's a lot of new research in this area when it comes to MS. In this paper from 2017, they propose considering the gut microbiome as a key organ for the regulation of tolerance mechanisms and speculate that the gut microbiome is the major environmental risk factor for central nervous system demyelinating disease. Uh, seriously, we need to keep our guts happy. The paper goes on to say that fiber is essential to produce short-chain fatty acids and that short-chain fatty acids also provide immunological benefits to the host by regulating gene expression and immune cells and shifting them towards a regulatory phenotype, decreasing the oxidative stress and reinforcing the intestinal barrier as well as the blood-brain barrier. Reinforcing the intestinal barrier, reducing leaky gut and improving the blood-brain barrier is better for our overall health and particularly important with people with MS. According to this paper published in 2021 from Harvard, some of the foods that support brain health include green leafy veggies because they help slow cognitive decline, berries because they have flavonoids that help with memory, and walnuts because they are an excellent source of protein and omega-3s that also help with memory. The Overcoming MS organization conducted the Holism study and it started with 2,500 participants. OMS is a program that incorporates several steps to live well with MS and part of it is a whole food plant-based diet plus fish. In the study, they found that those with MS that followed the program had the lowest risk of depression and fatigue. Oh yeah, depression. This is another really troubling symptom of MS. It's been reported that more than 50% of people with MS experience depression, and there's ongoing research showing it's a distinct symptom of MS. We're not depressed because we have MS. The MS causes the depression. Hmm. And in this study on the association of diet with quality of life, disability, and relapse rate in an international sample of people with multiple sclerosis, nearly 2,500 people with MS were surveyed. They reported, this study supports strong and significant associations of healthy dietary habits with better physical and mental health-related quality of life and lower levels of disability. Bivariant analysis shows that better quality of life and lower level of disability are more likely among people with MS consuming a diet with a higher intake of fruits and vegetables, healthy fat, and no meat or dairy. More fruits? More veggies? No meat, no dairy, yup. There are so many benefits to eating a more plant-based diet and the research shows it's particularly helpful for the symptoms of MS. In this paper on nutrition facts and MS, they state that MS is an inflammatory disease and our hypercaloric Western diets cause inflammation with high salt, 
animal fat, red meat, sugar-sweetened drinks, fried foods, low fiber, and lack of physical exercise. And expect that a nutritional intervention with anti-inflammatory food and dietary supplements can alleviate possible side effects of immunomodulating drugs and the symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome, thus favor patient wellness. They go on to conclude, as both relapsing remitting MS and primary progressive MS are inflammatory diseases, they can be influenced by pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory dietary habits and lifestyle through their action on cell metabolism and gut microbiota. Nutritional advice to MS patients may favor their wellness. Nutritional advice may favor their wellness. Who wants less possible side effects with their drugs and less chronic fatigue? Anyone? And that's not all though. Eating this way shows better overall long-term health outcomes. People with MS are more susceptible to other diseases and conditions, comorbidities. The most prevalent comorbidities in MS are depression, anxiety, hypertension, high cholesterol, and chronic lung disease. Some of these are linked to cardiovascular disease. There's also links to thyroid disease, asthma, type 2 diabetes, psoriasis, and rheumatoid arthritis. Dang, that's a lot! Improving our diets can help prevent or manage many of these conditions. When looking at the research for this, I looked at the larger and long-term studies. They have larger data sets and can see trends over a longer period of time. The Nurses Health Study is one of the longest running and largest health studies in the U.S. In a review of it in the years between 1976 and 2016, there were over 95,000 people that participated. The studies have contributed to the evidence base for developing dietary guidelines and nutritional policies to reduce intakes of trans fats, saturated fat, sugar-sweetened beverages, red and processed meats, and refined carbohydrates, while promoting higher intake of healthy fats and carbohydrates and overall healthful dietary patterns. JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, reports from that same nurse's study that greater adherence to various healthy eating patterns was consistently associated with lower risk for total and cause-specific mortality. Huh. The European Perspective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition, the EPIC study, is one of the largest studies in the world, with more than a half a million participants recruited across 10 European countries and followed for almost 15 years. It was designed to investigate the relationship between diet, nutrition status, lifestyle, and environmental factors, and the incidence of cancer and other chronic diseases. It found that eating a more Mediterranean diet and closer adherence to this diet is associated with reduced overall mortality as well as incidence of mortality from cardiovascular disease and cancer. In 2019, The Lancet published an article that was an analysis of dietary risk factors for non-communicable diseases. It looked at 195 countries over the period of the years 1990 to 2017. It reported, our assessment shows that the leading dietary risk factors for mortality are diets high in sodium, low in whole grains, low in fruit, low in nuts and seeds, low in vegetables, and low in omega-3 fatty acids, each accounting for more than 2% of global deaths. Clearly, we need to up our game when it comes to eating a more plant-based diet. I could go on for days and days and cite a lot more studies that show eating a more plant-based diet helps with symptoms of MS and long-term health outcomes, but this video is getting a bit too long. Let me summarize by recommending that we eat our fruits and veggies. The data clearly shows that eating a more whole food plant-based diet is beneficial to people with MS and chronic illnesses. It will also help prevent and manage comorbid conditions that we're more susceptible to. As always, I've listed all the papers and studies that I referenced today in the description below if you'd like to check them out. And if you're looking for some reading that's not quite as technical as these research papers, there are some books that you may want to check out. Fiber Fueled by Dr. Will Boslowitz, The China Study by T. Colin Campbell, 
How to Prevent and Reverse Heart Disease by Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn, Overcoming MS by Dr. George Jelinek, and What's Missing from Medicine by Dr. Saray Stanzik. And I'll also put links to these in the description below as well. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoy content like this, please give it a thumbs up, the like under the video. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos and subscribe for my newsletter using the link in the description below. Until next time, be well.